Hello guys and welcome to the discussion on the tangent line to a curve and the derivative of a function. To start, we need to have a review on the slope of a line because it's very fundamental in the discussion of the tangent line and the derivative of a function. So as a review for the slope of a line, let's have an illustration. So suppose that we have a Cartesian plane, of course, we have the x-axis here and we have the y-axis. And let's suppose that we have a linear function f of x. If we have two points within the line and this point is denoted by our values, we have the input values. The blue point has a for its x value and for the green point we have b for its x value. This will give us the ordered pair A, F, A for the blue point, and for the green point, we have B, F, B. How do we determine the change that happens between these points? So we have this triangle here, and uh, there is actually a representation for this. We have the vertical movement being delta Y, and the horizontal movement being delta x or we simply say this is the change of y or the change in y uh, and we have the change in x. We know how to find the slope so as a review we know that the slope as a concept is simply the rise over run and the rise is actually the vertical movement while the run is the horizontal movement. In this scenario we have delta y over delta x or the ratio between delta y and delta x and what's this delta y again delta y is actually the difference okay the difference between the y values between the two points and over rather over the difference between the x values of these two points in this scenario we have our slope being the output value of b or we have the f of b minus the output value of a which is f of a all over the input value b minus input value a and here we have our basic idea of a slope that it is just a difference between the y values over the difference between the x values Okay, so let's have an example. Uh, let's say we have our point here. We have the blue point being 2, 3, ordered pair 2, 3, and the green point being the ordered pair 7, 4. So again, we just need to determine what are the values, rather the x values and the y values in this point. We have x sub 1 being 2, y sub 1 being 3, or point 1. And then we have for point 2, x sub 2 being 7, and y sub 2 being 4. So, substituting this to our concept or formula, so we know we have y sub 2 minus y sub 1. Okay, so, let's have color. So, we know this is y sub 2, and this is y sub 1. x sub 2 will be 7, 2 is x sub 1. So we have 4 minus 3 over 7 minus 2. This will give us 1 over 5, which is in decimal we have 0 0.2. Okay, so what are the things that we need to take note? <laughs> Slope in a line is always constant at any given point within the line. So what does it imply? Just means that even if we choose any point, okay, so let's say, let's go back to this example. Instead of A, B, let's say we have another point here and another point here. Let's say this is C and D. Another D. Okay, so this point will still give you the same ratio. 
okay we have delta y delta x so this delta y and delta x will still give you the same ratio a constant ratio of 1 over 5 even if let's have another pair of points here so the ratio of the change of y and rather, the change of x here will still be equal to 1 over 5 or 0 0.2 that's why it's saying it's constant the slope in a line is constant at any given point within the line next is that we have change is a concept of difference so it's a very basic idea so we learned that there is a change uh, we denote by delta y and delta x and this delta here okay this delta here means uh, difference or subtraction so to know if there is a change there must be a concept of difference and lastly we have the slope can be interpreted in terms of the average rate of change and the instantaneous rate of change in a line being equal and always constant in any interval so how do we explain this what are these average rate of change and instantaneous rate of change what are these technical terms uh, basically, well, let's focus first in instantaneous rate of change. When we say instantaneous rate of change, it simply means the change that happens in an instant. Okay, so instantaneous rate of change is just the change or the rate of change that happens in an instant. And an instant is usually implied to be a point. Okay, it's a point. So it's just a point, for example, if we have here point A, so what is happening okay, in point A, what changes or yeah, what changes is implied in that instant? Okay, and of course later on when we proceed to the tangent line to a curve, uh, we can define this instantaneous change, okay, or rather the rate of instantaneous change more rigorously so for now uh, we simply define this one as the rate of change happening in a certain instant okay and then we have the average rate of change and it is simply the mean or the arithmetic mean or let's just say it's the average generally it's the average of all slopes or not really slopes but if you're given uh, several points okay we can get the average of the slopes between these points for example if we have to get the slope between these two points here and then here and then here 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 again we're getting the average we have the delta y's and the delta x's then getting the average of that okay if we get the average we add we add all the slopes here then divided, divided it by the number of points that we have. Well, not really the points, but yeah, the, rather the slopes that we have. We'll get the average rate of change. Okay, and take note that increasing the number of points or increasing the number of slopes that we get within the line uh, gives us. A better approximate of the change that is happening in the line or yeah uh, let's say between two points so let's say we have the green point and the blue point then we get the average between this line. but for linear function there are no problems actually for linear function the average rate is constant it's the, the average rate of change is constant anywhere so uh, for example if I get the rate here it's just 0 0.2 the rate also here is 0 0.2 and if we I added all the 0 0.2s here and divide divided it by the number of times I did the process it will just give me again 0 0.2 that's why it's telling us in the third statement of this the average rate of change and the instantaneous rate of change in a line again linear function is equal okay they are actually equal 
and it is always constant okay so this is the this is one of the properties of a linear function uh, for having a an average rate of change and an instantaneous rate of change being equal and these are the properties of the slope for a linear function for a line now the question is what if the function is not a line or it's not linear what happens to the slope of a curve function and how can we find the slope of a curve okay curve uh, a curve is a function actually at a given point okay so we will have this in the next video we're going to discuss the slope of a curve at a certain point